Muhammad's a 25-year-old dude from Egypt, and Eve is a 48-year-old lady from New Mexico. Eve is a licensed acupuncturist and massage therapist, which means her dude is most likely gonna get free massages, which is hella dope. Eve says she's very passionate about her career and enjoys healing people. Eve then whips out the sound tools and tells the audience that she's Native American, specifically Apache. My son Theron is 12 years old. He has autism, Down syndrome, and stage two kidney disease. Eve admits that being a single mother is very challenging, especially because her son requires extra patience and love. I don't know if y'all have any experience working with autistic kids. I do because I used to do a charity called Miracle League in Las Vegas. And essentially what it is, is they use the buddy system and you play softball with a bunch of kids with special needs and help them run the bases and take the bat and everything. This one kid, James, was my partner and he was so funny. The first time I met him, he's like, hey, you know LeBron James? And I'm like, yeah, the basketball player. He's like, yeah, well, I dunked on him. James is half my size. I learned a lot of great life lessons working with James, and I'm hopeful that Muhammad can learn a lot of great life lessons as well working with her son, Theron. Theron has to be catheterized every three hours, but I try to be positive and just keep on moving forward. I did not know what this was, so I looked it up, and it's a device that's inserted into the body to help cure diseases. Dang, if this kid needs that every three hours, she must drive to work and do one or two massages and then have to drive back home to do that for him. That seems very exhausting. He says when she had her son Theron, she never saw it as an unfortunate circumstance. He goes on to say that she's proud to be his mama, and I told myself I wasn't gonna cry, but this is like a really beautiful moment. Theron's father and I were together for close to eight years. We were engaged, but I think that different people go through different things, having a special needs child, and I just felt like I wasn't emotionally supported, so. Interesting stuff. She didn't give us a lot to work with and go into further details about the relationship that she had with Theron's dad. All we really know about him is that he obviously doesn't want to be on the show and that's why they blurred his face but i'm sure somebody's gonna find him on reddit anyway what do you feel like eating peace pizza eve says after separating from theron's father eight years ago it was a really hard time for her but she just focused on healing herself and made great friendships along the way for the longest time i was not interested in dating at all and then one day a man half my age slid into my dms and my whole world changed here we go guys buckle up it's another old american woman entering a relationship with a young ripped up muslim dude even though these kinds of relationships are the funniest ones to be on the show to be honest with you the success rate is terrible when describing him eve says He's totally shredded. <laughs> I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. On Audible, as you all are probably aware, you can find the largest collection of audiobooks. You'll discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including bestsellers and new releases. Also, new members can try Audible free for 30 days. And I recommend downloading the Audible app so that you can listen to your favorite podcasts or audiobooks anytime, anywhere. Whether whether it's traveling or whether it's eating a sandwich in the park. I usually listen to audiobooks when I'm cleaning my house or going to the gym. Lads, you know what book has been hitting different on Audible lately is Outlander, Claire and Jamie Frazier. Now that's a real love story. Also, if you're like me and you're really getting into memoirs, Audible has a great collection of memoirs. My favorite one is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. It was really cool to learn his story, where he came from, all the bad things he had to go through on his path to success. If y'all are interested in getting started with Audible, please visit audible.com slash wetsock or text wetsock to 5 500, 500. She's making it very apparent she's down bad for this dude, and their conversation originally started on Instagram, go figure. Let's look at that conversation right now. So a nice profile. Thank you. Hello, I'm Yves, pronounced Eve. What's your name? Is this how adults text? <laughs> My name is Mohammed. Nice to meet you. I hope your day has gone well. This dude's obviously Muslim and hit her up after seeing a picture of her in a bikini. So what are we thinking, haram or nah? He says that her and Mohammed started video chatting right away. And when we first hear his voice, you can't help but laugh because he sounds like Michael Jackson from South Park. No, wet sock, you're being ignorant. Yes. <laughs> he says that even though she's 48 years old and he's 25, the age difference doesn't mean anything to them. She also drops a bomb on us that after only a couple weeks of FaceTime, they both said that they're falling in love with each other, which is a huge red flag. I think she was just lonely, and I get it because of the whole pandemic, everyone's been lonely. But that being said, it's mathematically impossible to fall in love with someone only after a couple weeks of FaceTime. I bought the plane ticket, and then I was like thinking, oh my God, am I out of my damn mind? <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> no, but seriously, I've seen all the Taken movies and when girls try ballsy shit like this, I'm like, sis, look out for your safety. While in Egypt, Eve and Muhammad get cool pictures and videos together with the pyramids in the background, riding a camel, and I'm really jealous because I wanna do that too. Unfortunately, she got all caught up in the romance of the situation and got engaged as soon as she got there. I guess Muhammad surprised her with a red ruby ring and made her an offer she couldn't refuse. He's sus for proposing that fast and she's sus for accepting so fast. They both seem really physically attracted to each other but that only goes so far as we can see from all the relationships we've reviewed together on the show. But Mohammed finally got his visa. I'm so happy after all this time. And he's gonna fly to Albuquerque in two days. Uh, my only thing about this is Eve, you have a kid at home with special needs. You're already taking care of your son Theron. And I think the last thing you need is to also take care of a 25 year old dude from Egypt on top of what you already got going on. Like maybe get a less ripped dude in the United States that has experience working with kids. Kids. Booty shorts. <laughs> yeah. I doubt that's gonna fly. Back home in the States, Eve's talking with her friend and purging her closet of any outfits that she thinks her guy would find inappropriate because she's not trying to get her ass beat. Like Egypt and Muslim culture, like you can't like show your arms. I think it's really considerate of her to do this and purge her closet of any clothes that she thinks he would find inappropriate. What she wears really has nothing to do with him, but her doing this shows me that she's taking the relationship seriously and making a sacrifice for it. Next thing you know, Eve introduces us to her squad. She actually says the word squad. squad. How long? did you wait until you guys had sex? <laughs> yes. Like, wasn't, you know, like you said hi to the family. You went upstairs. Oh Grandma's downstairs. Oh, wow. These girls have no filter. I can't wait for Muhammad to meet them. They're probably going to ask him how big his dick is or something wildly inappropriate. I mean, like, did you have to rent a room? You, no. you can't, like, stay together. But, like, you know, you can stay in the same hotel. Let's just say that. <laughs> Eva has a bad habit of oversharing with her friends, and we can see that by how she told her friends that she took Muhammad's virginity. He was his virgin. Yeah. Was he yes. a virgin with you? Oh! <laughs> when Eve shared with her friends that she took Muhammad's virginity, it rubbed me the wrong way because that's something that's very taboo in his faith. And it's something that I think should be kept private because if his family finds out, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. And you just said on national TV, so I'm assuming they know. Does he know where your <laughs> is? Does he yeah. know? Oh my God, God. God. Does he play with your nipples? Does <laughs> he? God. These are important things, right? Eve will often say things like, out of respect for Muhammad, I'm gonna do this, but she'll kiki with her friends about the fact that she took his v-card okay did he last long being a virgin <gasps> he has no problem okay let's just say <laughs> that's not an answer is just fine <laughs> multiple times a day okay <laughs> Ugh, her friends are kind of raunchy. No, I feel like I'm watching Bridesmaids or something. It's a bit of a double standard too, because I feel like if Eve was a guy bragging about taking a girl's virginity, this would be perceived way differently. Fast forward to later in the episodes, Eve shows up with flowers to the airport to greet Muhammad. She runs into his arms, they start kissing, and that shit do be mad romantic though. Muhammad admits that he feels a little bit weird because back home in Egypt, he's not allowed to show any public affection, but in America, he can hug and kiss his girl as much as he wants. Eve then takes Muhammad back to her place and shows him where he's gonna be living at in America and they make love all night. In the morning, however, shit takes a turn because Muhammad was expecting Eve to get up and make him breakfast, but she unfortunately has to go to work. When you're going work. I expected after two years of waiting time for this morning, I was dreaming that day I will be having breakfast in bed. His voice paired with his blank stare makes him kind of seem like a kid in a man's body, right? No, Eve, you were supposed to make me a spinach omelet with feta cheese like my mama makes me back in Egypt. I feel bad leaving Muhammad here alone, but I have to go to work. I don't really have a choice. I have to be the sole provider till he has the authorization to work. He's a likable person, but I think it's incredibly irresponsible of her to pick a guy that's not self-sufficient. I feel like the six pack isn't worth taking care of another human. So random thing that Muhammad refuses to compromise about is that he wants a working bidet in the house so that his ass can stay minty fresh. What is a bidet? Maybe I can uh, make it. The bidet, I left it. I don't know how y'all feel about bidets. I used to think it was hella sus and then I got one and I'm a believer now. Muhammad was actually expecting Eve to have the bidet already working and when he found out last night that the bidet wasn't even installed, he had this to say. Ah, uh, you better get the bidet installed, Eve. I thought you were going to make me breakfast this morning. I'm sorry, love. I gotta go. You're on your own this morning. Sorry. <laughs> Don't just get used to do that. <laughs> okay. So on top of work and taking care of a child with special needs, she has to wake up early before work to make this dude breakfast every day. I feel like dudes like 
like Muhammad don't really want a wife as much as a second mother. I've noticed too, Eve really needs to work on speaking up more and setting healthy boundaries with her partner. Eve made me frustrated because I expected her to cook for me because my mom, she usually cooks for me and watch my needs if I need something. I expect Eve to do the same. I'm sure back home in Egypt, the dynamic was that he worked and his mom prepared meals for him. However, he can't work for at least six months in the United States. So it's perfectly reasonable for him to be self-sufficient and cook his own meals. If anything, if he wants to help out and feel like a supportive partner, he should be making meals for Eve if he's just living rent free in this house. This is not what I was expecting for my future wife. I'm sure back home in Egypt, Muhammad's mother spoiled him. And the problem with this is I feel like now that he got spoiled, he expects that same treatment from his partner. I feel like Muhammad also entered this relationship with an older woman with a preconceived expectation that she would nurture him. And this is not the case. So for a while, not gonna lie, things seem to be going good for this couple. She introduces him to her son and they seem to hit it off right away. Oh, are you gonna trick mommy and pretend there's mommy. a bug? Yeah, we oh, can trick mommy some at this. Of this. Oh. It's a coffee for a No! <laughs> My main concern with Muhammad and Theron spending a lot of time together is that Eve wants his primary role while he's in the United States to be taking care of her son. Eve even admits to the audience that finding a caretaker for her son Theron is difficult and expensive. So until Muhammad can get a job in the United States, she wants him to watch her son for free. I trust Muhammad to be alone with my son versus finding a babysitter. The reality is it's not just gonna be an afternoon. Sometimes it might be a whole day, so I hope that he can handle that. Muhammad says to the audience that basically he doesn't mind watching Theron. He just doesn't want to do this for the entire duration that he's in the United States because he wants to have his own identity and not feel like he's just the caretaker as opposed to the fiance. What I'm gathering from this is that even Muhammad are not on the same page with this matter concerned, and I'm actually kind of baffled that they didn't talk about this and reach an agreement before he came to the United States. Feels like something you would talk about before you get on a plane and leave your life behind in Egypt. It would be helpful, you know, obviously, like, since you're home. <laughs> you feel like you'll be okay, like, with Darren, if you're what? the one who's going to be with him in the afternoons. Okay. This guy can't even make himself breakfast, so I find it very unrealistic that he's able to be a proper caretaker for this kid for six months. The next argument that this lovely couple has is when there's a plumber in the bathroom installing the bidet for Muhammad. Meanwhile, Muhammad's on the couch chilling, watching Theron get his groove on, and he's unaware that a man is alone with his woman. What's going on in here? We're getting the, he's gonna install the bidet. Oh, how are you doing, sir? I'm great. Why didn't you tell me that he arrived? I thought you were with Darren. It's really funny when Muhammad tries to be intimidating because he looks like Tarzan, but he talks like Jane. For context's sake, Eve is trying to do a nice thing for Muhammad because he was struggling to install the bidet by himself. So she called up the plumber, let him in to get this thing installed for Muhammad so he has a fresh ass. Aren't you happy we're getting the, the bidet installed? Yeah, of course. But you know, baby, you can't be he here alone. <laughs> His voice is even funnier when he tries to be stern. Like I'm having a hard time taking it seriously. Religious guys like Muhammad are the worst because it's haram for him to live with a woman when he's not married to that woman. And it's also haram for him to have premarital sex. But he'll happily do those things because they give him pleasure. Yet Eve is not allowed to be in a room alone with the plumber. And how awkward is it for the plumber? He's just trying to do his job so that he can get done with his task and then move on to the next job. This guy's time is valuable too. I'm sure he doesn't want to hear about this couple's dispute. Muhammad goes on to say, in Islam, that's not right. A man and a woman cannot be alone. If I'm not home, call me. Homie, you're in America, not in Egypt, and Eve owns this household. It's not an Islamic household. Besides Muhammad, it's very hypocritical for you to only follow certain rules within your religion, but disregard the ones about premarital sex. Am I allowed to be in the house if there's a, another man in here or not? No, you're not allowed to. Like, where am I supposed to go? I can't believe this girl's gonna let a 25 year old dude that is financially dependent on her dictate what she can and can't do in her own house. Mind you, Eve never once gave a verbal commitment to convert to Islam, so she's not expected to follow the rules and practices. She says to the audience that she was really annoyed when Muhammad was doing this to her in front of the plumber because she felt like she was getting scolded and belittled in her own house. I noticed that Eve has a real problem with confrontation and standing up for herself, even when she was hanging out with the squad. squad. They said some things that made her uncomfortable 
comfortable, but she didn't speak up for herself there either. She really needs to work on that because when you're a doormat, people walk all over you. I give up everything in Egypt to be with you here. Like I made my sacrifices and you. Okay, well, I made them too. I understand. That's why I just tell you. Okay, so I don't know what kind of lifestyle this dude gave up in Egypt, but I'm assuming it's one where his mom wiped his ass for him. He seems really toxic and useless. I have a lot of Muslim friends. It requires a lot of discipline, and it's one of those religions where you either embody all of it or you don't. It's very hard to, like, pick and choose which rules to follow because it just makes you seem like a hypocrite. So the next argument they get into is when Eve is trying on clothes to go and meet up with the squad. It's actually the first time that she's going to introduce Muhammad to the squad. What's the matter? I can see your underwear. I can see everything. Okay, well, I can put another jacket on. All right, All thank right. you. Mm -hmm. Eh, what's fair is fair. I agree with Muhammad here. I personally wouldn't feel comfortable if my girlfriend wore a see-through dress with a black thong. Like, that is a very see-through dress. And I don't think Eve realizes how see-through it is. So I do think it's perfectly reasonable for him to ask her to put on a jacket or something to cover that up. We're excited to meet Muhammad for the first time to figure out if his intentions are real and if they're true and as genuine as Eve's. See, that right there is already an issue because they're already gearing up to test the fuck out of this dude and we don't know if Eve's intentions are pure herself. She may just want a young ripped babysitter that she can take to Pound Town to watch her son so that she can not have to do that and focus on work. That is also very possible and I feel like already the friends are coming in there with bad intentions. I feel that they are trying to see how I will react because I'm Muslim. So they in purpose to show more of their poops and I don't need to see that. I don't really see it that way. I think they're just wearing really nice dresses because they know that they're gonna be on TV. The only friend I see showing excess boobage is the blonde and she has big boobs. So there's nothing wrong with wearing something that highlights your assets. He needs to get used to this. This isn't Egypt, this is the United States. Are you comfortable with us having wine? Yes, I bring the wine with us. <laughs> So we have some questions for you. Is it okay if we take it easy? <laughs> Putting you in the hot seat, Muhammad. Yes. You can ask me uh, anything you want. Honestly, so far I like Muhammad's demeanor. He's being respectful here. I do think that it was unnecessary for her to ask the question if he feels comfortable with them drinking. Them drinking has nothing to do with him. He's not dating any of you. So I found that to be an irrelevant question. Secondly, I don't like that they didn't open up with some small talk and are going right into the interrogation. Anyone would perceive that as rude. When I see this happen, I'm like, how are y'all not asking him questions about living in Egypt? What is that like? I would be so fascinated because he's from Alexandria, the city named after the GOAT. 20 and 0 record. Alexander the Great ruled the whole world. Have you ever been intimate with any other women? Like had sex with any other no. women? No? You never like made out or like... No. You never were like, hey girl. Hey. <laughs> He's staying polite despite them asking inappropriate questions, which is commendable. I personally would never ask such an invasive question to somebody that I've never met before. Earlier, Muhammad said that instinctually he thinks that her friends are weird, which I understand now because it feels like I'm watching The Real Housewives of New Mexico. How did you know what to do then if you've never... <laughs> no, really, like, did you... Have you ever watched porn? Ew, we knew it was gonna happen, you guys. In Islam, this is a really taboo topic to talk about. Even if you're not a Muslim man, I find it very inappropriate to talk about porn when you first meet somebody. Like, if this was me, I wouldn't wanna talk to these old ladies about porn either. While this is all happening, Eve just laughs as her friend goes on to say, I mean, I know we're animals. We have instincts, like, we know what to do. When her friend says this, Eve weirdly looks at Muhammad to see his reaction. And then Eve's other friend asks Muhammad if he knew what to do. And then when he responds yes, she starts laughing at him and if this was me I would be so uncomfortable so I can only imagine how uncomfortable he feels in this situation I feel like she should have talked to her friends beforehand and been like hey why don't you girls act a little classy you know this guy's very reserved guy he's a Muslim I honestly got think teenagers would have been more mature about the situation than the squad Muhammad even says in Egypt no one would ask these kinds of questions she's talking about sex and if I watch porno or not I don't want to be here I just hope he doesn't think that all women in the United States are as vulgar as Eve's friends because I don't know one person that would ask questions like this on a first meet. Just even coming here, like he was nervous about me not wearing this dress and like my butt was showing. I was gonna wear a shorter jacket and then he was like, your butt is gonna show. 
wow, Eve might want to change her name to Judas because she just threw her dude in front of the bus in front of her friends with zero context. Provided zero context. There's no dude in the entire world that would be comfortable with his girl wearing this out when you can see her thong. Level with me here. How did she want her dude to react? Oh, you want to wear that so that every dude can stare at your butt and see the outline of your thong? For sure. Sounds great. Like, Huh? Also, Eve, if you want your friends to actually like your fiance, why would you tell them this? It just seems like you want to get your friends all riled up so that they can be confrontational with Muhammad in your place. I called Muhammad out because he was being controlling, like right before we went out to dinner. So I felt like I had to stand up for myself because it wasn't true what he was saying. Hard disagree, your ass was showing. It's a trashy look, especially when you're gonna go out to dinner. Eve telling her friends this gives them the green light to start going in on Muhammad. So one of the friends says, I get it, but my husband's comfortable with who he is as a man, so I can wear what I want. Then the other friend chimes in and says that Eve is never dressed inappropriately. It's actually ignorant to speak when you don't know the outfit in question. You weren't there, you didn't see what she was wearing. Let's put ourselves in Muhammad's shoes right now. You're in a place where women are abused and stolen. So you would obviously want your fiance to dress modestly so that you don't encounter a lot of problems. Well, he's an American now and that's something that takes getting used to and he needs to adjust his way of thinking and I totally agree with that. But to come at him like this. When men try to tell women what to wear, it's, it's never in a in a positive way, like how you're saying, if you're trying to protect her, it's more of controlling. If you're not even giving him the chance to explain why he thinks the way he does, and you're immediately saying, oh no, you're wrong for thinking that way, he's just gonna shut down and not wanna talk to you. Next thing you know, Muhammad straight up says, I'm not sure why you're judging me. I can see it in your eyes. Then Eve's friend responds, we see you too. Muhammad was a real one to speak up about it though, because it was obvious that they were judging him before he sat down. Dude's 25 years old from Alexandria, Egypt. Of course, he's gonna be very culture shocked when he comes over to the United States and he has a lot to figure out, but their approach sucks. And if I'm him, I'm thinking, I don't want my girl to hang out with these friends anymore. As they're driving home from a very awkward dinner, Muhammad and admits to Eve that he's still very upset that she outed him for the entire black thong incident and also says that he doesn't give a shit about what her friends think and honestly I agree with them I think they kind of suck when I told you my opinion about your clothes that was private moment between me and you well first of all Tatiana knows that we had a huge fight in August. This girl right here 100% overshares with her friends and I understand that they are her support system. But if you're gonna present an issue like the thong incident, you better show a picture and present the issue correctly. For Muhammad, this dude left his friends and family back home in Egypt and I would be heated if all the information and all the bad things in my relationship were being relayed to the Real Housewives of New Mexico. Back in the summer, Muhammad was furious that I went on a family trip and was at a hotel and went to the pool and did not have a one-piece bathing suit. That's so hypocritical of Muhammad that he doesn't want her to wear a bikini when he originally hit her up because she was wearing a bikini. Here's the thing, if you're gonna say that you're a Muslim man, embody the entire religion. Don't pick and choose what to follow and what not to follow because it's cringe. Caused all this drama over a freaking bikini. After, After you said you're not going to wear a bikini anymore. Who cares about a bikini. That's why I got upset. Yo, happy this clip happened. So with more context, it's understandable why Muhammad was upset because Eve will agree to things and then go back on her word later on. We can really see that by what just happened. She agreed to put on a jacket because she had her thong showing. She made that decision herself. He didn't point a gun to her head or anything. So then next thing you know, when they're in front of the friend, she plays the victim and says, he made me put on a jacket and he thought my outfit was inappropriate so that her friends will do the work for her and start a battle with Muhammad. You guys see what I'm saying? Like I found that very manipulative because it's just one of those things where you should have that discussion with him. There's no reason to bring your friends into that conversation. You met me, the first picture you ever saw, yeah. and then you DM'd me with a, me in a bikini. And I told and you I'm I can't not wear going a bikini. to marry a woman wearing a bikini anymore. Okay, here's the main struggle with Eve is that we agree with her, I think all of us collectively, that there's two different cultures meeting here, but we can't really defend Eve Eve when she's agreeing to his demands and then trying to back out later. Like, just don't agree to him. You told me at the first when I met you that you want to change and you want to- What? Change for what? No, I don't. Uh, 
I don't really understand why she's acting oblivious to the fact that she's been changing a lot of things about herself and making sacrifices to accommodate him in this relationship. Earlier in this video, we saw her purge her closet of any outfits that her guy would find inappropriate. Clearly she missed one. <laughs> I'm just struggling to sympathize with her because this guy has been very transparent about his expectations of her since he touched down to America. He wants an obedient woman that does everything for him. And I'm just surprised she hasn't sent him back to Egypt yet. Obviously things are different here. You so can dress whatever you want, drink wine or whatever, but don't get married. Are you going to choose a bikini over me? My response would be yes, I'm choosing a bikini over you, Mohammed. He really needs to realize that she has all the control in this relationship. She can really send this guy back to Egypt anytime she wants, just buy him a plane ticket. If she wanted to follow her friends and how they are dressed, I will not be a part of that. Because if she does, I will fly to Egypt before the 90 days end. Muhammad just seems like he wants her to make all the sacrifices for him, but doesn't want to make any sacrifices for her. So I can see why he's negatively perceived. When they finally get home after arguing, Eve grabs some blankets and goes to sleep on the couch. I'm not really sure why she's sleeping on the couch in her own house. She should make Muhammad sleep on the couch. The next morning after fighting with Muhammad, Eve says that she just wants to have a nice morning with him and forget about the argument that they had the previous night. As a sign of respect to her partner, Eve wants to take Muhammad to a local mosque. She's very apprehensive about wearing a hijab job, but I don't really see what the big deal is. She would only put a scarf on her head for about an hour or so. When you're there, you're going to cover your hair, so out of respect, <clears throat> so that's it. I have to, like, wear a hijab? Y yes. I don't know if she's stressing about the compromise of wearing the hijab in the mosque or if she thinks she has to go to the store and get a hijab. Usually they give out hijabs at the mosque. And uh, maybe she's going to be interested in to become a Muslim. You look nice in your scarf, babe. Sis, if you're this pressed about wearing a headscarf, why are you engaged to a Muslim dude from Egypt? Also, this new invention is so cracked called Google. Maybe do some research before showing up to get your prayer on next time. So we're gonna make the prayer soon. Yeah. Eve, would you like to pray with us? I can show you how. You can or just you can follow just me. Oh, okay. This is our, our ladies section. Mohammed, come on, I'll, I'll introduce you to everybody. Uh, so far, the people working at the mosque are being warm and receptive, but Eve has a problem with the fact that the men and women are separate. The woman working here also hit Eve with some weirdness right away. It's my deepest um, prayer that inshallah you become a Muslim one day. Maybe let Eve learn more about the faith and actually experience what it's like before you say that it's your greatest hope in your life that she becomes a Muslim. Something that isn't true. To be 100 about it, if someone hit me with that weird ass one liner right when I stepped in this building, I'd be emotionally checked out too. My father was a religion man. We were going together to pray every single day, but my father passed away when I was 14. Okay, good to know. So Muhammad's faith is so important to him because it was a way for him to bond with his father who passed away. These two are having drastically different experiences at the mosque. For Muhammad, it's a way for him to connect and reminisce and think about his relationship with his father. Meanwhile, Eve has no idea what's going on. She's forced to bow down. They're speaking Arabic. She has no idea what they're saying. I kind of feel for Eve watching this because I feel like her experience would be totally different if she had a partner that communicated, you know, the practices of the faith, why they do the things they do, what the phrases mean. Like she really went into this blind. My advice to Eve is that if you wanna change religions, by all means do it, but make sure that that's something that you genuinely want and you're not doing it to please your partner because all that's really gonna do is fill you with resentment for not only your partner, but also the faith. They're all very nice and welcoming. And who knows, maybe this is the first step for you to convert to Islam. Islam straight up doesn't want people to convert for marriage. They want people to convert because they believe and embody the teachings. Does he know that she's a massage therapist and she massages dudes? Is he gonna freak out about that? Did I just spoil something that's gonna come later in the show? Maybe. I don't have any plans of converting. Later that evening, Eve plans to go out and have a drink with her friend, but Muhammad guilt trips her for going out and not spending time with him. Are you going to drink with your friend? It would be nice to have a glass of wine, actually. <laughs> really? 
Dude's being so passive aggressive, I thought he was Bilal for a second. This guy's been trying to force his religion on this girl without explaining the actual teachings or why it's so important to him. So I understand why she would need to go out and have a drink with her friend. It's been a very loaded day. They're not here and we could have a nice dinner together and we can watch a movie together. It's just gonna be a short girl session. Muhammad's controlling and refuses to compromise about key things that would make this relationship prosper, but I do think that he's owed a date night if he's been there for two weeks watching her kid. Muhammad also admits that he feels very threatened when Eve hangs out with her friends because they already don't like him. My worst fear is that Eve, she acts like her friends. That's going to be very bad for this relationship. How am I supposed to control you in this relationship if your friends remind you that you don't have to be controlled in a relationship? He wasn't happy that I was coming tonight. He thought I was going like out, out. Oh, like to party? Like, yeah, like. Okay, but did you communicate to him that you're not in fact going to a party with your friends? Because that seems like a very important piece of information, no? Thinking back on it, she was really vague. So I understand why he was acting like a little bitch if he thought that she was gonna go out clubbing with her friends or something like that. Eve's friend straight up asked her if she would convert to Islam for Muhammad. And Eve says that she doesn't wanna convert. It doesn't feel good to her. Then her friend says to the audience that it doesn't sound like Muhammad is a accommodating or flexible to what she needs. Yet Eve's doing everything for him, how is that fair? This is another one of those important topics that I'm surprised they didn't talk about before he came over to the United States, but I think that they would benefit from a sit down conversation where she straight up tells him, you either stop trying to get me to convert to Islam or I'll buy you a plane ticket back to Egypt. Eve's friend goes on to say, if you've ever been in a relationship that hasn't taken a positive turn, this is how it starts out. The friends drop in knowledge, there's this old saying, if you give someone an inch, they take a mile. And Muhammad has already come up on a couple miles from Eve and he's gonna continue to do so unless she sets those healthy boundaries for herself in the relationship. I would never marry someone that doesn't prioritize my needs. I'm gonna keep making videos about this couple and all the couples on the show. I'm back to work. I'm sorry that I went MIA for a month. That's my bad. It was me and my mom's birthday. And I got her this gift, which is her writing Gilly Do like he's Falcor from the Never Ending Story because that's me and my mom's favorite movie. And I used to watch it with her when I was a kid all the time. This was also the trip where I introduced my girlfriend to my entire family, even my Italian relatives, because we all ended up going to Italy to celebrate me and my mom's birthday together. We went to Lake Como and I've never been to Lake Como before, but it was beautiful seeing all the mansions. And I'm gonna be posting a lot of that on my new channel that I'm starting called Your Wet Tissue. We gotta stay on brand, right? Next time I go on a hiatus for a month, I'm gonna tell you guys in advance because I've been getting a lot of comments from y'all that are like, hey Nick, where are you? Are you okay? And it's like, yeah, I'm good. I just need to work on my communication. That's a bad friend moment on me. Now I'm back to work and I'm gonna be making a lot of videos about this couple and all the couples on the show. Thank you so much for all the likes and comments and watching my content. It really means the world to me. Well, guys, all in all, I'm happy to be back. Comment below, subscribe. This is your Follow me on Twitch and Instagram right now.